over. Here's the seven. That's the seven-sided form uh, that are originally, okay, put a bubble in here, it turns into the left ventricle. Okay, so what I started to do was to cut the edges off. And this is how it's been done through tradition. It's called truncation. So what happens is I took the edges off. See how the edges are kind of gone there? Mm -hmm. And what's so interesting is that this never happens in platonic forms. When you cut platonic forms, you cut the corners only. You don't cut edges. So how did I decide to cut edges and corners? Two, two different things. I didn't decide at all. The form told me how to do it because I know where the axis was and if I cut this corner off, it had to be cut all the way off. I, I, uh, that was amazing to me. I thought this is really cool because I haven't seen any forms that have cut off edges and corners only. There aren't anybody who's done it. So I cut it off more and I kept cutting it off. See how it's getting a little smaller? I can speed this up a little bit. All right, cut some more. Cut some more. Okay, there it goes. <laughs> cut more. Here we go, more. Seven. This seven is exactly twice as small as that seven. And that's the transformation it goes through. And he said that the middle form, okay, the dual, would be healthy for the heart. And that's this one. This one I put in gold leaf. This is the dual. This is what would go around the heart at night to reconstruct it for the next day. This is the form that goes around you can't see. Now, of course, when you do this, you have to say, okay, yeah, sure, how do I know that's really true? I have to say that to myself, too. Your question is my question. So what I did was I put the form in it. I took this form and I put it inside that. And then I took that form and put the seven-sided form in it. So you can see, okay, that the seven-sided form is in there. And, the seven, and this new form, which has 13 sides. 13. Never form like this ever. It will fit into the original seven. And that's how you know it's a dual. This is what goes around the heart at night according to what they have told me. Okay, this is the, this is the form that helps to reconstruct. Okay, based on form now, form transformation. So all of this that you see here is tr form transformation. This is what the new building is going to do. So that the building in the future will be one of health. It will be one of healing. So I'll find my clicker again here. So here's how I did this. I found that the form comes from a cube now with a tetrahedron that's spinning. That's where the form comes from. This is showing you what I just did. Mm -hmm. And this is how I put two of them together and got two cubes right in the middle. And I make these out of wire and I put these into electric drills and put them in water and test them. Um, so there it is. Now this is part of a building. And you'll be entering this building, you'll be entering another form and another form and another form. And when you go outside, you'll be hitting into forms that go outside, which is called stellations. And you will be doing this inside the building, which is really inside the form. You'll be living this transformation. There are no right angles. Now here's the bell. Okay. In the past, what they would do when people were sick is they'd put them under bells and ring them very slowly or not very loud. And it was a healing process. It cured many, many sicknesses to put it under a bell and have it rung. So again, this shape, okay, which is the bell, which is 
this form that's here. This is the transformation of that bell. Another, another uh, idea that this form is healing. Now here's really neat. I sent this form, I sent this seven-sided form to a Japanese company. It cost me $750. And I told them what I wanted you to do is I want you to put a vial of water inside this form and I want you to take another vial of water and put it in another room. And then 24 hours later, I want you to test it. And so what he does, uh, he's got lots of books out now. And what he did was he photographed the water in the other room. And what you want to do is I want you to put a vial of water inside this form and I want you to take another vial of water and put it in another room. And then 24 hours later, I want you to test it. And so what he does, uh, he's got lots of books out now. And what he did was he photographed the water in the other room. And what you want to look for here is that when forms are growing, this is one second, okay, uh, and when it's not growing. So basically these are chaos. This one's starting for him, but it's very small. You want to look at the size. These are in chaos. This is chaos. This is starting to form here. Um, so it means that if the form, crystal form is more formed and is growing and is bigger, it means there's more energy. Okay, so I have brought the real photographs to show you. Um, this is, I mean, it shows okay there at, on the screen, but to show you that what he sent me was, was this. So here they are. This is the water that's in the other room. So does form have an effect on water? So 24 hours later, the water was tested here. And this is the water in the other room? This is the water that was not in the form. And this is the water that was in the form. Um, you see that you have larger crystals, Four times they're growing, there are four of them growing. They're much more beautiful. They have much more energy. And that's definitely, I would drink this water over this. <laughs> so here are three sources of healing. First, the bell. You have the water itself in the form alone with not any transformations. And then you have the healing process of the form in a duality. So here's the other one that shows you the difference. Now, this is an inversion. And this was the first indication that I had the heart, that it was the heart. I didn't know. Now, what I did is I took this form and I turned it inside out continuously. And when I did that, I found this form. It has two arcs at the top bottom and two arcs at the top that have the golden mean proportion. Mm. Uh, it's an absolutely beautiful form which I'm going to give, I'm going to show my, my next lecture. I'm going to bring it out. You can actually see it. Um, it's standing up on a sphere. I put a sphere here like they did in the old days. They, they would put a, a stump there for the guy to hold up. I put a sphere there. It's sitting on a, a, a marble base. Um, and so what happened was that when the 9-11 hit, I was pretty affected by that. So I decided that, they, that I would do something. And they had a contest for a memorial at the World Trade Center. And I entered it. And they gave all kinds of rules and all kinds of things that you had to do and so forth. So I entered it. And uh, I spent about three months on it designing a building for that memorial. And uh, I used this form. And so it was my first indication, you know how long ago that was, this was my first indication that buildings could be formed. Now I've gotten a lot further into that and I got a lot more to go. But I'll, sh I'll, bring, I'll show you the model. 
I'll show it to you here. This is the building. And what I did was these were the, the structures that held up the building, the metal structures. They all look like that. And I took 76 of them, which is how many it takes to make one story. And I arranged them into these two shapes because these are the patterns that the sun casts from the building when it hit, when the buildings hit. So this was the pattern of one, one of the buildings and the pattern of the other building. So I put the 76 structures into that. And then I ran a, a piece of marble down in here that had the names of the people who were in the building and the people who came to help people on the other side that died. And it was a stream of water would run down this and fall into that big sphere that got hit. I use the sphere, the water goes into that sphere and it goes into seven pools. And I noticed that, that that shape had a heart. So I'll go back here so you can see the movement. Uh, this is where everyone was remains would be in. There are two towers. These towers right here, the reason they're shaped like this is because when you're underneath them and you look up, that's the shape you have. The tower goes up like that because it's so high. And that's the actual shape when you look up at it, when you're below. These are two chapels. There's one for the north and one for the, uh, the south. One is blue, one is red. The people who were hurt in the, or died in the one tower would go into this as a chapel, and the people who died in the other tower would go into this one. <coughs> okay, here's another picture. This is what I had to submit. These are all the drawings so, so it could be made. Uh, here's the sphere. And here's this beautiful form that is going through the building. It's hitting the building right where the planes hit. So this one hit, this one hit at, at this part, and this hit this part where they hit into the buildings at different spots. The form is going in, okay, and it never ends. It continues and goes back up. So this is incarnating and excarnating at the same time. And there's a ring underneath here where all the remains were put for the people they couldn't identify. And then this was a place where you could go in and be elevators that go up into these towers. And this right here is a hole that goes through the whole thing and there are stairs. And there are stairs that go up for the firemen and stairs that come down for the people. And so I combined those two and I embedded these into the sides of the, uh, the, the pyramid here. So it, they're falling, they're like this. Can you see them in here? They're embedded. So this was the first attempt to bring form okay, into a building, which I think was what's going to happen in the future. So I brought that model so you can see it. And you also can see that beautiful form. And you can walk up the elevator, you can walk up here and look down. It's all open. And these are because they're 76. Uh, and uh, I can turn this around. Oh, I can turn it this way. You can see the shadows that these were imprinted into the building. You can see that these were falling. I tried to make them look like they were falling. <coughs> and here's the little form here. So. Um, I think the, the future of building, okay, is not going into buildings, but going into forms. Going into spiritual forms. Not into buildings with spiritual forms, but going into them. And going through the transformation that's found in nature that you're just trying to use, which is alchemy, which is earth, water, air, and fire. What's different, what's changing, what's reversing, and what's inverting. This must be experienced by us inside a form. So that when we're in it, the form is transforming us. And we'll be able to transform ourselves at the same time in a way that we can now leave the building, which will not really have any walls, we'll be able to leave the building, okay, not through the doors, but through the forms.